Hey, what's up you guys? It's your boy Simply Food by TY and today we are going to be making a roasted garlic and rosemary focaccia bread. So the first thing you're going to do is start prepping your garlic. Have your oven preheated at 400 degrees. Now I've just taken off the top of the garlic. You don't have to worry about peeling it. You want to get yourself some aluminum foil and on top of this, which you do not see me doing on camera, you're going to add one eighth of a teaspoon of olive oil, an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, one eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt. You're going to wrap that up, put that in the oven at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes and then sit that to the side and I'll let you know what we're going to do with that a little bit later on. Now we're also going to be using some rosemary. Now I'm going to be using fresh rosemary depending upon if you're going to be using fresh or the dried herb. I would suggest if you're going to use the fresh you only need roughly I would say about a half a tablespoon. If you're going to be using the dried herb I would say use a full tablespoon. Now, of course, this is bread, so we're going to be using yeast. I would advise if you can get your hands on the instant rapid rise yeast, please just use that. I had to use the active dry yeast, which means I had to add two one fourth teaspoons of sugar. Um, and I'm also going to be adding in two cups of lukewarm water. I prefer to use the instant rapid rise, <clears throat> excuse me, because I just feel like it's a whole lot easier to work with. Um, but once you start to see that the um, yeast mixture start to foam at the top, that's when you know the yeast is alive and you're good to go. So now that that has done what it needs to do, we're gonna go ahead and start adding in the other ingredients to that. So I'm putting this in my stand mixer, but just know you can absolutely do this by hand. If anything, I would actually suggest that you do this by hand. Um, we're, so what we're adding in is one and a half tablespoons of sea salt, one teaspoon of garlic, and then we're gonna add in, of course, the fresh rosemary. And just give that a little mix around. Now we're gonna be gradually adding in the flour because you don't want it to clump up. So just add it in little by little. This particular recipe that we're doing right now is actually the same exact recipe that I use for my Dutch oven bread, which is the reason why, if you guys have seen that video, I would suggest that you just do this by hand. Um, I, In my personal opinion, I think that my KitchenAid is way too big for this little amount of bread that I'm making. So in my opinion, I feel like it didn't mix it the way that I wanted to. And you definitely don't necessarily need to knead this bread in order for it to turn out great. Um, I noticed that about midway through making this, so I would just suggest put it all in one bowl and then just gradually add in the flour by hand. I just think it'll save you a lot of time, to be honest. Um, but now that we're almost done adding in all the flour, as you can see, it's really pulling together nicely. If you do decide to use a stand mixer, just make sure that you are scraping down the sides just so that nothing is getting clunked to the side of one bowl. Now, of course, like I said, this is my Dutch oven uh, bread recipe. So if you do not happen to have a Dutch oven, I would say either get yourself, um, you know, a constricted pan because this dough is one that will spread. So just keep that in mind. Get you a pan that you know can sustain a lot of heat and that doesn't necessarily stick because you don't wanna go through all of this trouble and then your bread completely just falls apart. But as you guys can see, you know, this, this dough is pretty wet for the most part. And like I said, I, I honestly think that's because um, this KitchenAid is way too big for this amount of dough. Um, but I'll show you guys how to easily fix it just in case you guys run into the problem as well. So I'm going to be gradually adding in flour just so that I can start to form this. Now this is really important. Do not go overboard with adding in way too much flour. The more flour you add, the more you're gonna have to knead the dough. All you're going to do is create more work for yourself. If the dough seems like it is way too sticky, that you cannot handle it, that you can't work with it at all, my best advice to you would be to just put it inside of a bowl, wrap it up with um, you know, the saran wrap, put the, uh, maybe I would say a little bit of olive oil in it and just let it sit for two hours. It'll firm up naturally on its own and then it might be a bit more pliable. If you start adding in way too much flour in the beginning, you're gonna end up with really, really, really tough bread. Um, so I've probably added in roughly, I would say about a cup's worth of flour at this point, and that's completely fine um, because I only added in four cups of all-purpose flour in the actual um, stand mixer. 
So as you can see, it's really loose. It's still very doughy. That's completely fine. Just put it in the bowl with, I would say, about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of oil. You're going to let that sit for roughly about two hours. After the two hour mark, as you can see, it's rose up nicely. Um, at this point, you do not need to touch it with your hands. Get yourself a spoon, just break it down off of the sides just to release some of the air in it. And you're gonna do that on all sides. Put the towel back over it, let that sit for an additional two hours. So at this point, we are at the four hour mark. At the four hour mark, that means we are pretty much at this point in the home stretch and we are about to bake off this bread. So. What you need to do now is have your um, oven preheated at 400 degrees and put your Dutch oven inside of the oven. By the time that's done getting nice and heated, that means it'll be time for your bread to go inside of it. So just have that preheated and ready to go. Um, at this point, you know, like I said, you really don't want to be adding in too much flour. If anything, just do it. Just knead it enough so that it can be in the shape of whatever it is you want it to be, whether it be a round, rectangular, whatever. It's completely up to you. But you can leave it on the cutting board, put a towel over it, and it's completely fine. You don't need to add any more oil. Now, as I said, I had that preheated in the oven for 45 minutes. That's how long that bread sat on the counter. Be extremely careful because that pan is very, 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 very hot. Do not add any oil or anything to the pan or it will burn. Now you guys are gonna see that of course, this is not going to keep the shape that's on the cutting board right now. And that's completely fine. Once that dough gets inside of that hot pot very, very carefully, Fix it with your fingers just to mold it the way you want. When it comes out of the oven, it's gonna look like a beautiful loaf of bread, so you don't have to stress yourself about that. You're gonna put the top on it, add just a few little pinches of the fresh rosemary, put the top on it, bake it in the oven, covered for 35 minutes with the top on. At the 35 minute mark, remove the top and let it go for an additional 15 minutes. At that point, you'll then remove it from the oven very, very carefully, and then the next thing you know, you're gonna have yourself some beautiful, beautiful bread. Now I would suggest either serve this up with some nice salty um, butter or with some olive oil. Either way, honey, you live your best life. Look, thank y'all so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Slaying in the kitchen. Simply Food by T.Y. We hope that you enjoyed it. Simply Food by T.Y. If you haven't took the time, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Simply Food.